Scene one, take one. Mark. Dear Dreamer, this letter is being written from a place of raw honesty and love, but not at all a place of expertise on how to make your dream come true, because I don't know nothing about that. I haven't been through it all and come out on the other side, pinned with a blue ribbon or draped in a victor sash or dollar bills or even unshakable happiness. In fact, I have yet to see my own dream made tangible. This letter is being written from the inside, from the front line and the fault line, from the uncertain thick of it all, from a man with a straight line mouth and an ego with a slow leak, from a man doing it the only way he knows how splitting his cries and his smiles right down the middle, swallowing his moonshine mistakes. While in the sunlight, his sweat irrigates his life and that life he, like you, has been tilling, hoping there's a harvest coming. At 16, I thought I would've made it by now. At 18, I said 25 was when I'd make my first million and at 25, I moved back in with my mother. Bill collectors breathing on me like Brooklyn summer. And at almost 28, I'm just almost 28, so I got no answers. The truth is, our dreams could be as far away as forever, or as close as lunchtime. Tomorrow, you could wake up and read this letter on a billboard, or you might wake up and guy who wrote it. I said, it all just depends. Some say on skill, some say on will, some say on luck, some say on bucks, some say on race, some say on face, some say on Sunday, God got a mighty, mighty plan. Nobody know what it really depends on, but everyone knows it depends. So I went out and I bought all the books on how to make dreams come true. They're laying out the how-to's, how somehow spinning life into some fantastic formula for dummies and dream chasers written by experts and dream catchers who swear that they can one plus one and left foot, right foot my way into fulfillment without ever taking into consideration all this mess I got strapped to my back and my head and my legs and my heart. And them, them books, them books didn't bandage my fat and flat feet swollen on this journey. The pages didn't spin, nor could they be eaten to ease the hunger. Though I could curl up with one, I couldn't curl up on one for a decent rest, and a respite from the hunt. I'm useless. I thought about, I thought about burning them. I mean, at least I could use the firelight for this long and often dark road. One thing I'm now certain of is that this, this road less traveled is traveled by more suckers than you think. All of us out here slumped over wearing these weird, fake, broken smiles, trying to avoid the truth that we all got road rage. We are a bunch of exhausted stragglers, exalted strugglers, disciples of the dreamers that came before us, students of a different Bible, reading the Book of the City of Angels and the Big Apple and an orange house in old New Orleans or a cheap barren flat above a bistro in Paris. We are, we are led by the Moses in our minds to the promised land in our hearts that we know is real. At 16, I thought I would have made it by now. 
Now I'm making up what making it means as I go. But this letter ain't about making it. Because I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about that. What I do know is how it feels. How it, how it feels when that spirit thing won't stop raking the metal, the metal mug across your rib cage, clanging like a machine gun fired at a church bell, vibrating everything irreverent inside. Sounds like a prison revolt that only you can hear and feel. And nasty things are being said about that prison guard, that scared, controlling, oppressive part of you and everyone else. If you're anything like me, you hope it never stops. You hope the, the bubbling never dies down. And the yearning to break out and break through never simmers. You hope the voice that delivers the loudest whispers of what you envision never silences that it never cowers behind fear and expectations that other people strap to your life like a backpack full of bricks or books written by experts. <laughs> because if it did, if it disappeared, if the voices vanished and you were no longer overtaken by the taunts of your own potential, no longer blinded by your perfect vision, of your purpose, no longer engorged with passion, what would happen? Well, I guess, I guess nothing. And to me, there's nothing scarier than nothing. Even when nothing seems to be going right, nothing seems to be going right. I'd rather be bothered by the loud knocking on the door inside. Even though I answered years ago, that knocking continues. I'd rather my appetite be wet by a teaspoon of almost there every now and then. I'd, I'd rather suffer from internal eczema, constantly irritated by the itch of possibility. There have been, there've been many, many anxious nights. The darkness has slept all around me. My friends cocooned in this coziness that I've yet to, I've, I've yet to achieve. My, my eyes swollen with exhaustion. My body sputtering on its way down, but, but my dream my dream just won't stop crying, screaming like a colicky infant. Sometimes I think it, it needs to be changed, but usually it just needs to be fed. So, so I, I feed it everything I have. And it feeds me everything I have. Though the struggle is always made to sound admirable and poetic. The thumping uncertainty is still there. Sure, I know my dream is as real as my hands, but I grip tight the short leash, insecurity tied to its end wagging beside me. If you're like me, you've struggled trying to stomp out the flame of doubt and fear, the warmth and comfort, always enticing and familiar, though venomous and life extinguishing. I know people who have burned, a burn so violent they can't be categorized by, by any number, degree. I know people who have burned from foot to torso emotionally. Their legs of passion turn to soot. Yet no matter how hard I try to escape, to kill the deceptive heat, dancing like a devil's tongue, to douse it 
with all the will and faith I can muster. I know that a tiny ember always glows beneath the brush and it whispers to me, but only when I step to the edge of excellence. My feet, my toes clawing the edge, my mind already airborne. It whispers to me, I don't have wings. I don't have a shot that, that I don't have a clue. But to me, I don't have a choice. So I jump anyway. Dream of, if you're like me, you jump anyway. This letter isn't for any specific kind of dream. It isn't, it isn't intended for a certain genre, medium, trade, or denomination. It's only intended for the courageous. Maybe you're a dancer, moving to the sound of your own future, or a musician, banging, strumming, bowing, plucking, blowing into creating soundtracks for dream trains chugging along through thick night. Or a painter spilling and splattering confessions across the stretched face of a canvas. Or an actor praying at the altar of your alter ego. Or a photographer finger on the button like a quick draw cowboy shooting, but not to kill anyone to preserve forever. Or maybe even a writer for some strange reason, writing expert books of pages of good intention and rah-rah and fantasy and sometimes truth. Or maybe even letters to people that you don't know but do know you love. Maybe you aren't an artist at all. Dreams, uh, they're not reserved for the creative, you know. Maybe you're an athlete, a gladiator hoping at the shot of the lion. Maybe you're 18, planning to make your first million by 25. It's not impossible. Oh, maybe you're 18 and you plan to make it to 21. It's not impossible. Nor is 22, 23, 24. At 25, I move back home with my mother. And found out that she loved to teach little kids and, and bake and, and help the needy. Her passion, her passion made plain in her. Her dream made real after 40 years of 40 hours a week behind a desk. You might be 50 and think it's too late, but jump anyway. Dreams don't have timelines, deadlines, and they ain't always in straight lines. But jump anyway. Or maybe your dream is to have a family. To wear corny t-shirts and hold up signs at the little one's game. Kiss your child on head and heart, selflessly fertilizing his or her passion. Stay awake with them, and that dream is crying like a colicky infant. Help them feed it, and before sleep, do your best to smother that tiny ember of doubt and fear that glows just beneath the brush. This letter is for us all the awkward angels with crooked halos and second-hand wings, the irresponsible and curious fire-bellied babies, the deformed with hearts on the outside and ears on the inside, the squares who use nine-to-five cubes as planning sessions for the real work, for the rebel children, the wild ones, 
the long shots, the bad mouth and the side eyed by the terribly, terribly, terribly envied by the secretly by the safe. For those of us who bear the cross of two perpendicular planks of passion, who find life is best when nailed to it. For the jumpers, for the jumpers, for the jumpers. This letter is for us all. To remind us that we are many, that we are right for trying, that purpose is real, and that making it is possible. But this letter ain't about making it, because I don't know nothing about that. No, I don't know nothing about that at all. Besides, I'm, I'm not so sure making it even matters so much. When it comes to my dream, I think of it as some rabid beast that found me when I was young. It bit me and infected me, and before I could catch it, it shot off into the darkness. Now, I spend my life searching for it, hunting it down, and I know I'm on its trail. I can smell it, I can hear it, sometimes I think I can even see it. Either way, I know I'm on the right track. My nose to the dirt, foaming at the spirit. I look under heavy stones, I look behind massive trees and deep and dark caves. And I keep looking until I find that beast, that thing that bit me when I was young. The truth is, finding that beast may or may not happen. The treasures I have discovered under those heavy stones and behind those massive trees and deep in those dark caves have created the hunter and the human that I am. Your dream is the mole behind your ear. That chip in your front tooth, your freckles. It's the thing that makes you special, but not the thing that makes you great. The courage and trying passion for living and the acknowledgement and the appreciation of the beauty happening around you does that. Dreamer, I, I don't know if I'm fit to say much more than that because I don't know much more than that. If you do, please write back. And if not, then well, please accept this as a few words of encouragement. If this letter means nothing to you, if it's just more pointless weight added to an already heavy life, feel free to burn it and use it for firelight for this long and often dark road. But if you somehow find truth, comfort, or, or anything at all within this ramble, keep it close and use it for firelight for this long and often dark road. That's all I got.